Malice unleashes not a spirit bomb, but a hyper beam. I'm calling hacks. Talk about this overpowered integrity knight needing a nerf. So what's up guys, Fox in here. SAO Lissization, War of the Underworld Episode 7. What a better way to spend your birthday than with SAO. I mean, you got the Green Knight, Uncle Bercoli, and blonde girl Alice finally taking stage. Unfortunately, I am sad to say that I do have mixed feelings on this episode. So go ahead and be awesome, hit that like, and let's dive into this. But first, today's SAO video is brought to you by Crossing Void. Are you ready for the Avengers of Anime mobile games? You got over 25 anime series, 50 plus anime waifus. Enjoy this turn-based all-out brawl using characters like Asuna, Kirito, Kuroyukuhime, Mikoto, Ren, Holo, Yuki, Shana, and 50 plus other popular characters. More being updated. Combine characters like Asuna teaming up with Yuki for her ultimate mother's Rosario cross skill. Or go ahead and cross Asuna with a different anime character. How about Asuna teamed up with Emi? And yes, you have all these different anime characters interacting with one another. It's pretty awesome. On top of this, they are voiced by the original Japanese voice actors. Go ahead and pick your favorite character and play with them in private for a bit. Go ahead and download via my link to join the fun. Right now, you can get a free s rank character, and yes, you can select it. Just in time for SAO Season 3 is Integrity Knight Alice. So go ahead and click the first link after this video to enjoy Asuna, Kirito, Alice, and a ton of your favorite anime characters. By the way, a little birdie told me, the special Christmas update is coming soon. Anyway, this week's SAO episode kicks off with the CG Goblins versus the CG Soldiers. You know, it was only a matter of time, although I am glad to see them using this stuff sparingly. Not to mention this pretty awesome Leno and Fizzle scene. You had the kick-ass lolly duel making Goblin Slayer proud. One thing to notice is that this actually was a new scene for the anime. Getting into the Nutless Integrity Knight, Renly. Oh yes, Quinella is still making a cameo. Unfortunately for the Green Knight, she still had her clothing on. But anyway, you're getting insight as to why this Integrity Knight coward ran off. It turns out Quinella had deemed him a failure for being unable to master his divine weapon. The poor dude ended up being put in storage like a sack of potatoes. What the anime didn't tell you was that Renly was actually frozen for 5 years. Youch. Bercoli got off easy. Switching it to Roni and Tize, despite them looking like they were awfully close to the war the last few episodes, they're actually in the supply tent area. Gotta protect Potato Kirito. But really, all of these guys really weren't ready for the Dark Territory army to break through so quickly. In fact, the plan was, if LJ's group was taken down somehow, Renly and his army would have been right behind him to assist. But, you know, the green dude just pissed himself while hauling Aus out of there. Right here, Renly did take careful notice of Kirito. His first thoughts of him was that he looked extremely fragile. But still, the guy was clinging to two divine weapons no problem. This was a feat comparable to stuff that Integrity Knights could do. Oh, and did someone mention goblins? It is almost comical how the human side is so scared of the weakest that the Dark Territory has to offer. At the very least, Renly did try to reach for his weapons. Then for Renly's flashback here, oh my god, did he just take out Kirito? He saw this guy competing in this tournament, which is actually similar to what you saw Yijo and Kirito do in the past flashback. The guy actually killed his best body. But I'm sure you got the feeling that there was more that was cut out. You'll hear about this soon. Then for Kirito here, the AFK dude still strongly gripping his pulsating thick blade. Despite this guy being in potato mode, deep down inside Kirito still wants to protect his two ex interns. What a guy. And notice, even in this state, the great Kirito was motivating this veggie knight. How surprising, a level 100 player was able to take out a level 5 goblin no problem. It just sucks to see that Ronin and Tisa didn't get any time to shine. I mean, who's protecting who now? Holy hell did Renly's nuts drop this episode. Oh yes, gotta gather all that juicy goblin experience. I mean, Renly fully digivolved into Goblin Slayer this episode. The weak little goblin stood no chance. Getting into the actual challenge, Renly versus the goblin leader. But really didn't matter, this goblin leader was mostly all talk. Renly finally achieved Bankai, I mean release recollection. Quite the achievement for someone that couldn't even use a perfect weapon control. I think the animation for this was mostly fine, but I really had issue with this whole scene. It really felt like Renly's big moment had a lot of the bite and depth taken out of it. I don't know, was it just me? The whole Renly scene from start to finish felt a little bit too shallow for me. Switching it to something more bite sized you had Lena and Fizzo finishing up their own Goblin XP farming. I think even this scene was enough to par. In the background, you saw like 10 Goblin bodies. In reality, there should have been hundreds of Goblin bodies in the background. That's how powerful these little two devils are. Anyway, switching it to more exciting stuff with the Dark Territory, Quinella, aka D. Time to unleash all those adorable winged minions. Aren't they so precious? Unfortunately, the anime skipped over some of the D and minion stuff acts here. Let me fill you in. 
in case you were wondering why D was being so ultra helpful to the god Vector. If anything, D was one of the most motivated people to capture this Alice girl that he wanted so badly. That way, Gabriel could return to wherever the hell he came from. D would then be able to take the dark territory thrown for herself. Previously, the only obstacle that stood in her way was Shasta. But you know, Mr. Dark Tornado is no more. D is actually quite ambitious. She wanted to take over the entire underworld, not just the Dark Territory side. That way, she could actually storm Quinella's tower, and then hopefully gain access to Quinella's immortality sacred arts. If only she knew. Then for the lovely minions, these should look familiar. Kirito and Alice actually had their own little run-in with the minions outside the tower. Not mentioned in the SEO anime were these minions being part of Quinella's little experiment. Minions actually require this vast amount of resources to create for D, so they were pretty valuable, definitely more so than any goblin on the field. Switching it to the badass Bercoli. Now you know why Bercoli was holding back, or hopefully you do. To be honest, I really didn't get a good sense of why this was that he was holding back in the SEO anime scene. Previously, before the war, Bercoli had flown over the sky just continuously slashing away. Via Bercoli's perfect weapon control, he was binding his time until the Dark Territory aerial forces made their move. Then he could take them out all at once. It was due to this minions posing such a danger to them. In this scene, all the slashes that Bercoli made into the feature all appeared at once. For the actual anime scene, I don't know, it felt like something was missing. Was it too quick? Did they cut out too much of Bercoli's inner monologue? I mean, cause really, I was really looking forward to this moment, but the scene really didn't do it for me. Did any of you feel the same? Let me know down below. Anyway, getting back to Alice and her spare bomb, which to be honest was not a bad comparison at all. You're now finding out what Alice has been up to this entire time. Oh, great ground, send me your sacred energy. Humans and dark army alike. This episode, I did like that you're finally getting this very interesting realization from Alice. All these souls, all these floodlights, everyone dying from both sides, they're all the same. In fact, Alice was trying to only focus on the humans who were dying, but all the thoughts and feelings coming from the sacred power from both sides dying were indistinguishable. This actually really shows Alice's progression. Recall back to the old Integrity Knight Alice that you saw near the start of Essiolization. That previous knight would not have cared about the humans, and especially not anyone from the Dark Territory side. So getting into Alice's actual hyperbeam. Oh yes, yeah, so gorgeous. All the sacred power in the land converted into this super dense compact size. You would not want to be on the receiving end of that. Oh my god, the fray ogres and the dark mages snapped away. Oh no, the best girl witch is melted too. How could you, Alice? So wicked. Which actually leads into something I did love. The face of Alice at the very end. Before firing, you saw some hesitation. Then post-blast, we could just feel how much pain Alice was in after having killed thousands in an instant. You could tell she's so devastated. So going forward, Alice will have even more to bear. So overall, this episode, I really wish I did love this SAO episode more. It felt like this was the roughest looking SAO episode this war season yet, especially near the start. If they're already having issues on just episode 7, I'm now glad that they're going to be splitting this. Also, don't forget about the stuff involving Renly and Bear Coley. The impact really felt lacking. It feels like they're cutting a lot of the context, backstory, and details just to keep up with a certain pace each episode. Not to mention just to pack all this into a limited number of SAO episodes. If they really wanted to fully adapt the Renly stuff, most of this episode should have been focused on him, then perhaps ending with Bercoli and his minion smoothie. On the flip side, let me mention this. Before rereading the Renly stuff, I honestly had almost completely forgotten about him. In the long term, I'm sure I won't mind too much about the Renly stuff, but Bercoli really deserves much more attention. Come on guys, do Bercoli justice. Switching it to a huge positive, definitely the major and best scene in this episode goes to Alice. From her thoughts on the battle, the actual freaking death ray. All of this topped off with her hurt face at the end. So powerful and beautiful. Next up, getting into the Light Novel 2 SEO anime changes, the highlights. As you've already mentioned, tons of cut and remove detail acts this episode, which means a juicy segment this week. First off, Renly meeting up with the two girls. Some cut detail. Renly actually covered his Integrity Knight symbol as he admitted to running away. Then, when Renly took notice of Kirito, he was so intimidated by Kirito's presence that he took a step back. Oh my god, Kirito's reaction is just too strong. Next up, Renly's backstory, a quick overview of it. At the age of 13, Renly actually got into this four empire unification tournament. The guy was super young, so naturally he was a genius born with high potential. If you recall, the path to being an integrity knight had two rounds. 
Either breaking a taboo, then followed by Quinella knighting you in bed. Or two, you moving up in the ranks, winning tournament after tournament, eventually reaching this special one. The winners from the Unification Tournament could become Integrity Knights. Renly was actually up against his best buddy during the finals, which he accidentally took his life. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Before this, Renly and his buddy were really like this pair of birds. They helped one another, competed with one another, ever since departing on their journey to become knights. We really served as a small parallel to Kirito and Yujiro. Post Integrity Night Ritual, the talented Renly quickly got a divine weapon. Keep in mind that these divine weapons actually choose a user instead of the knights choosing them. However, Renly was never actually able to achieve perfect weapon control. Eventually, Quinella got bored of him, and as he saw, she freaking froze his ass. Quinella had more interest in Alice anyway. Renly was then actually a statue for five years. That was until the day that Kirito and Yuji stormed Quinella's tower. A desperate clown happened to unfreeze Renly to fight the intruders. At the time of this War of the Underworld, the 15-year-old Renly was not only afraid of fighting, but also afraid of doing any killing himself. Next up, the Double Winged Blade Relays Recollection. Originally, these divine weapons had been a pair of holy birds. Each of them had lost a wing. Being unable to fly, both of these birds connected their bodies. They then rose and flew to incredible heights. Next up, a cut Leno and Fizzel scene. Originally, both of these two actually got to the tent to save Renly and both of the girls. Leno and Fizzel then headed out to take out more goblins. Then, you would have that scene of another goblin coming in, which was followed by Renly losing his goblin slaying virginity. In the anime, this was sped up some, which actually, I don't mind this being removed, especially since Leno and Fizzel got a new scene added for the anime. Then, a cut detail for both of these little devils. Before even getting involved with the Goblin Slayer stuff, both of these two were curious about Kirito. They really wanted to know about their reason. Kirito and Yujo had given up body and life fighting Quinella, but why? What had they gained? Unfortunately, in the anime version of them, nothing. And it really is unfortunate. Little stuff like this matters a lot. It actually reminds me recently of that lonely dragon from Kemono Michi. Previously, she was just this hungry girl. But then once you got insight into her, it turned her into this character that was much more than this little girl who eats anything that moves. Next up, Burkoli. So Burkoli had set up the hundreds of slashes in the air the previous day. Just keeping those cuts up in the air had put extraordinary strain on him. Bercoli had a few thoughts while being under this great mental strain. He thought it was unfortunate that his great upcoming battle wouldn't be versus Shasta, but perhaps a different Dark Territory leader. Bercoli thought the death of Shasta was disappointing. Bercoli previously hoped that via Shasta, some peace talks would be possible in the future. That was no longer possible. By the way, definitely check out my top SAO fights ranked. See if your favorite fight made it to my list. Should anything from this episode be on there? But anyway, more important, let me hear your soft voice in my ear. Was it just me, or did anyone else have some issues with this episode? Perhaps you absolutely love Renly, Bercoli, and Alice this episode. I definitely want to see what you post. Definitely subscribe for more juicy anime videos, check out my Asuna video, and I'll see you guys later.